right. Morning, guys. Morning. How is everybody? Morning. Good. How are y'all? It's uh, we got a lot coming up. We Holy do. Week coming. <laughs> Holy week. Wow. Yeah. What is Holy Week? I wonder what Holy Week. Is. I wonder. I wonder if the boys and girls know what Holy Week is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I always look at it as it's a. It's it's like telling a really long story, in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we sort of break it into parts throughout the whole yeah. week and tell a really big story. For people. Right. Like what? what? What do you mean by that, Pastor? Yeah, what big story? So, I mean, we're telling the story about Jesus's um, death and his resurrection, and we take a lot of time to do that. Uh, so there's a lot of days that stick out in there there's 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 palm sunday there's monday thursday there's good friday we're gonna have easter vigil this year and then there's like easter sunday so there's um a lot of days in there and a lot of things to see and sort of um listen to and zero in on as well so yeah so palm sunday what do you see what do you like about it what do you hear? I like the palms. <laughs> the palms. The palms the, I think of the color green, even though it's purple, because of the, the palms waving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think of a word. I think there's a Palm Sunday word that I think about too. You know what that is? Hosanna. <laughs> Hosanna. Yes. Yes. Don't we sing uh, Prepare the Royal Highway? Isn't that like the cliche Palm Sunday song too? Actually, that's an Advent song, but works very, very well mm -hmm. for that's right. uh, on Sunday as well. Mm -hmm. Because there's some a lot of similarities in both. There's a pathways, pathways. Yeah. So Jesus comes into Jerusalem. That's Palm Sunday. Mm -hmm. Crowd's pretty happy about that one. Um, and then we move on to Monday, Thursday. And Monday is kind of a funny word. What do we see here, experience, and Monday, Thursday, and what's a Monday mean anyway? This whole service, there's a lot that happens in this service. This is a very important service. It's a very dramatic service. That the heart of this service is the word love. So first of all, let's go back to what we should say, that Hosanna means Lord, save us. So those people who were welcoming Jesus in were saying, Lord, save us. And then things started to get you know, bad later in the week, <coughs> or at least Holy Week. So, Maundy means commandment or mandate. Mm -hmm. What's the commandment <coughs> or mandate means to love one another. Mm -hmm. So, Maundy is about love and service and servanthood and humility and all those important Jesus things. Mm -hmm. There's another side to it as well um, that I think is important is... Uh, Jesus shares a meal with his disciples and they have bread and they have wine but it this is when Jesus um, institutes or starts establishes um, the Lord's Supper communion the Eucharist um, this is why we have it then the foot washing is about serving or the humility mm -hmm. be one thing at the end of that service that's very dramatic and, and it's always been settling to me you know what it is uh, stripping the altar yeah why on earth do we do that i always looked at it as sort of this transition into what comes next it gets a little darker it gets a little more bare turning into some some darkness that happens on good friday as well so it's a cliffhanger of sorts at the end of of maundy thursday when we strip the altar it is unsettling because all of these, the way that we see worship are all the furnishings and the, the candles and the pyramids, everything is, are, is taken away in preparation for the next day for what is to come on Good Friday. So then we pick up Good Friday. Good Friday is sort of the empire strikes back of the, <laughs> it's the, it's the one that's dark. Yeah. Me, but a lot happens there. It's a very important part of our, of our, triduum or the three holy days so what happens on good friday it doesn't look very good so why do we call it good because it's pretty sad and 
Mm -hmm. It seems bad, and we've seen we, the, the lights are dim, and we wear black cassocks, and uh, we've seen Were You There, which isn't, you know, yeah. particularly happy. Why do we call it Good Friday? Yeah, um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, we hear about the story that we hear about is um, Jesus' death, Jesus dying on the cross. I think about the words that Jesus says when, when he says, it's finished, it is finished. That everything Jesus came to do on earth is finished. And that included um, dying on a cross so that Jesus could then go on to, to rise from the dead, to break death, as I like to say it. Um, that, that'll come later, but that dying on the cross was part of the work too. It doesn't end there, but that is part of the work. And Jesus didn't shy away from that part either. Um, there was no work left undone for Jesus to do. And Jesus, Jesus finished it. And we can't really call it good mm -hmm. until we know the whole story and look back. Because at the time, it doesn't feel good at all. No. But it's good Friday because we know how the story ends. Right, right. The next day, what's the third day of this, these three holy days? The Holy Trinity one. What is that third day? It's a great big church party. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. The Vigil of Easter or Easter Vigil or Holy Saturday. It goes by a few different names. So we're going to do that again this year. I know St. Matthews did it some time ago. Um, I used to do it all the time at, at the churches I served in the past, but we, just, mm -hmm. we didn't bring, bring back this year. And the real, the, the sort of the, the real one, the way that we're going to do an abbreviated version, because the actual liturgy for Holy Saturday or Easter Vigil wow. begins, it's very long. It begins at sundown mm -hmm. and it. It, we start with a bonfire, ideally in a cemetery or graveyard, which we're going to do. And it is the time we bring the light back into the space. The light that had gone away Good Friday starts to come back. One of the cool things about this service that I think is really neat is there's something in it called an Easter proclamation. And basically it's saying, what is this night all about? Why are we here? Why are we staying up late? Why are we telling stories like this? Because we tell a lot of stories. Um, why are we even doing this? And um, there's a part in there that's talking about this is the night. And when we read scripture, we hear that the women went to the tomb early in the morning. And so it's kind of built on this tradition that somewhere before that sunrise, before even before those women were headed to the tomb, somewhere in that night was when Jesus rose from the dead. And so that's a big, exciting thing to think about and it's the day traditionally that um the church would baptize children that mm -hmm. was or, or just people the baptized would be baptized mm -hmm. and and it is a celebration and we we relive so when you do the full service you re you tell the story again and mm -hmm. it usually <clears throat> for hours and hours into the evening we actually at the school that pastor and i <clears throat> attended we did this service and and we were at the the oldest Lutheran church in the in the country and uh, yeah. in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And we would do this service and the service would go until the middle of the night or early in the morning, at which time when it was finished, people would break the fast of Lent. They would eat and have a big breakfast. So then you get to the big finale. What happens next? Easter Sunday, which is when the tomb was found empty and Jesus had risen from the dead. We have a big story. Yeah. Return of the Jedi. It is. It's a big story. It's all, it all happens that week. That's why I think it's so important for people to know the whole story. Sometimes people, I know not the boys and girls listening, but some people in church only come maybe at certain times of year, like maybe Easter and Christmas and maybe Palm Sunday. And if they come Palm Sunday and hear that part of the story, and then they come, miss everything else during the week and come on Easter, they miss all that other part of the story. And so they might get this idea that church is only about happy things, about 
Jesus coming in and being welcomed into the city. And then on Easter morning, a big celebration. And when you miss that part, then you miss a big part of what our Christian faith is about. And you miss the fact that sometimes our Christian faith is about some things that aren't always happy and they aren't always comfortable. They're the part of the wilderness times that we have to walk through. I think it's important we, all, we know the whole story. <clears throat> Come join us for Holy Week. We've got some, we've got some stories to tell. You got to get ready for it. It's going to be here soon. I know. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, bless Jason and all those bulletins he's put together. I know he's done a good job with those. I think by not counting wedding and funeral bulletins, I think he has 14. Yeah. Yeah. So in, the, in the trigium is like a small novel. <laughs> it is. Yeah. This year we're, we're this year we're we're publishing the trigium, the the services in one booklet. So it's a it's almost a 50 page book. Mm -hmm. It's your field guide to Holy Week. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's go and get ready for it. Y'all have a great week. All right. You too. Good to be well.